oxygen on the woods. It was a hot day. Three of us were well ahead of the pack. We were about to lap another racer when he just rode off the trail and down a steep, steep, steep ravine. All three of us stopped.
was new was the man, woman, I don't know, sitting in the driver's seat. Whoever they were, they had a long, dirty blonde hair with colorful but dirty streaks almost like painted in. The best way I could describe it would be if a girl had painted her hair like an old times clown and then fell in a mud puddle. Of course, this freaked me the fuck out as soon as I saw it, heart pounding, adrenaline pumping the whole nine yards. I was facing the driver's side of the car and while I was scared shitless initially, I scrambled to the left and towards and somewhat away from the front of the car to put some distance between me and the car. But I didn't bolt right away. Again, it was a bright, sunny, beautiful summer day. Nothing to be afraid of. I mean, I thought I was pretty confident in my youth that I could outrun whatever was in that car. I parked around the corner of a tree, and with a new vantage point, it was immediately clear that it was just some old J.C. Penny mannequin with a wig on, still creepy as a fuck, as it hadn't been there before. But I had to admit, whoever put it there had got me. Then it turned its head, and those pupilless cold eyes looked right at me. Long story short, I was in disturbing 
instead of stopping and chatting and being amused by the entire biological coincidence. My immediate subconscious reaction was a massive rising internal rage that someone somehow had stolen my face. Very, very weird. Man, I would love to come across my doppelganger. Hey girl, if you're watching this, hit me up. When I was four and my brother was ten, he stayed home from school and my mom left him to babysit me. She left numbers on the fridge and stuff and off to work. I don't know how much longer after she left it happened, but we heard our dog barking viciously, which was completely out of character for her. At this point, my brother and I are in the kitchen waiting for our biscuits in the oven, and the sound of Fluffy's barking gets incredibly louder, which meant she was in the front lawn outside, or excuse me, around the side of the kitchen entrance. The gate that led to the back was a little further down to the side of the house, and whoever was outside was in the gap between Fluffy's reach. My brother opened the kitchen curtains to see if he could see what was going on. Right as he opened the curtains, there was a man looking right down at us, almost like he expected my brother to open the curtains. The doorknob began to rattle, and my brother ran to the living room and grabbed the phone, taking me with him. As soon as he got to the phone, the rattle stopped. My mom came home, and at the same time as the police, the guy was never found. My brother remembers it as vividly as I do. And it's the creepiest thing I've ever lived through. A person commented on this story and gave their own and said, I was an only child when I was around five or six. I was routinely left home alone after school until my parents got home. We lived in a house in a forest clearing, one driveway in, a flimsy wooden fence, the typical two plank across thing. My dad trained dogs, police dogs. We had a Doberman that was big, gentle, but very protective of six-year-old me. He attacked my dad once for trying to spank me. I came home from school one day to find the sliding door on the rear of the house broken and on the ground, with the dog staring out into the forest. There were tattered pieces of clothing on the ground, a shoe, and some blood. Apparently somebody broke in while the dog was asleep on a bed and he got a hold of them. He was a big boy, so imagine a 50-pound Doberman running at you as soon as you break into this house. The creepy part for me was how he just stared, didn't bark, didn't growl, just stared and waited. Now that's a good boy. While this can be explained, the image still creeps me out to this day. It was around the time of Blinking craze. Oh my gosh, what a time. I had no idea what it was and haven't heard anything about it. Got a taxi into town and was walking around the city center. Um, and life was normal. I then took a turn into the town square and there was around 200 people blinking everywhere and everything. I don't know what was going on. I thought there may have been gunshots or a bomb, or maybe the world was ending. I then asked someone next to me, and they explained it, and we laughed it off, but that brief moment of time, I'll never forget that uneasy feeling. I think the blinking era, like, overlapped with the flash mob era, and wait, was the Harlem Shake in that era, too, or close to it? What a time. I can proudly say that I've never blanked anywhere in public. I used to live on a farm and one morning there was a full horse leg on our driveway. Like, still had a part of the hip attached and was so fresh. We sprinted to our horse paddock to find all of our horses were completely fine. We disposed of the leg and never got an explanation. Very creepy. Excuse me. P.S. This happened in Canberra, Australia. So there's no mountain lions or bears around here. One of those huntsmen spiders probably did it. A man with a freshly exposed bone on his arm and missing substantial amount of skin and muscles walked up to me in a parking lot, asking me calmly for cigarettes. It really freaked me out, and I told him I was calling 911 for him. He immediately ran off, and I gave his description to 911. There wasn't much blood. 
blood, but the guy nearly needed immediate medical attention. This was in San Jose on an afternoon about five to six years ago. Still have that image giving me nightmares to this day. Me and my two brothers and our uncle were running down the lake in this boat on a beautiful summer day. Blue skies as far as the eye could see. shoreline and saw a smallest passenger jet flying low until it went below the tree line and disappeared. We were flabbergasted because our family has not been in the area for over a hundred years. Or excuse me, our family has been in the area for over a hundred years and there is not an airstrip in that direction anywhere. There was no loud bang no fireball, nothing. No way it had crashed. We still don't know how it was possible that it did what it did. The next person says, Once an older man watched me at a gas station and then literally followed me for miles around town. Like I turned into the parking lot and started driving another road and he was still following me. I got on a four-lane road in the left lane and got beside someone then sped up and while taking an exit, so the guy was blocked by a pickup truck in the right lane. That's probably the scariest thing that has ever happened to me, and broad daylight. It was 1984. I was 15 years old and was alone at my older sister's house. It was late morning. I had just got out of the shower, still wrapped in a towel, when I heard a noise from outside. I looked out the window and watched a complete stranger with a rope. Excuse me. With a rope I used to walk my dog with. You mean a leash? Why are you walking your dog with a rope? Get a leash, baby. Get a leash. And he then leaned a mom that was on the deck against the door. I called my sister, told her what happened, got dressed, got the heck out of the house through a different door and hid in the bushes until the police arrived. The house was somewhat are taking care of your own mental
share with me to read in a future video, make sure to email this email right here, which is also available in the description down below. It does not have to be your own story. It could be your mom, your dad's, your grandpa's, anyone's. Just let me know the details. Lastly, if you're feeling generous and you want to dip your favorite <laughs> sleep dress, here is how you do so. Here is my tip jar and cash up information, but I recommend, as we talked about at the beginning, 